Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, June the 16th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NBA basketball. Let's talk about a betting opportunity that exists this morning. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me be as clear as possible. Folks, the battle for the Western Conference, barring further injury, is over. I believe we know, at least this is how I'm playing it, you make your own decisions. But I believe I know who's coming out of the Western Conference, and that's the Utah Jazz. Right now, to win the whole thing, you're getting Utah at a plus 350. Plus 350. Understand what that means. You don't even have to believe in Utah. If Utah makes it out of the West, as I'm suggesting here, then with a plus 350 on one side of the ledger, you should be able to hedge the play. So you could win in the finals if either the Eastern Conference representative or the Western Conference representative wins the contest. So now's the time, in my opinion, to set that up. Why are the Jazz going to win the West? It's because Kawhi Leonard is going to miss Game 5, according to reports that are recently breaking. He has a knee problem. He landed awkwardly on his knee. Now, I know many pundits are down on his leadership abilities, right? Colin Cowherd, for example, on Fox, uh, always laments the fact that Kawhi Leonard isn't a talker, right? Understand, Larry Bird wasn't a talker. Just make no mistake about this. Kawhi Leonard is the leader of the Clippers. It's not Paul George. There is nobody else to fill that void. Also, I want you to look at the home record of the Utah Jazz, understanding that the Jazz have two games left at home unless they close out the Clippers in Game 6 in Los Angeles. Right? If they don't win a road game, the Jazz have two games at home. Now, they're going to win Game 5. Right? Because, again, the Clippers cannot survive a first-team All-NBA leader like Kawhi Leonard being out of the game. They just don't have the personality types around him to pick up the slack. Right? So the Clippers are going to be down 3-2. Kawhi's knee injury is the kind that might keep him out of Game 6. Even if he plays in Game 6, since this is a guy who, unlike a Kevin Durant and unlike a James Harden, plays at both ends of the court. With an injury, Kawhi Leonard, in my opinion, might not be able to go, might not be able to be himself. You might recall a few years ago when he was with the Spurs. He had a thigh bruise and couldn't play. People couldn't understand it, right? Former player commentators who never played hard defense a game in their lives were saying, oh, if I could hobble out there, I would play, right? They didn't understand that this is a guy who plays every minute he's on the court, right? That injury is not going to allow him to hide on defense because that's not his DNA. He's a defender. He sees you over there. He wants to be over there shutting you down. With an injury, a major injury, that is going to force him to miss a playoff game here. When we get to game six, Kawhi is a guy who, if that injury is going to prevent him from asserting himself on both halves of the court, Right? Think Michael Jordan. He might not be himself in Game 6. Let me also point out, too, that the Jazz are underrated. The Jazz are the one seed, folks, in the Western Conference. 
I want you to look at the odds you were getting on the Jazz with a month left in the season. We thought countless other teams, the Lakers, for example, had a better chance of winning the West than the Jazz. Right? Let's remember, the Lakers ended up being the seventh seed. Right? I want you to look at the All-NBA teams. How could anyone take them seriously when Donovan Mitchell is not even third-team All-NBA? Folks, this is alpha on the conference one seed. Right? It's beyond ridiculous. This isn't Beta. This isn't Paul George fitting in with the Clippers. No, this is the showstopper on the one seed in the West. Mitchell didn't make All-NBA first team, All-NBA second team, All-NBA third team. What I want you to do is to look at his numbers in the playoffs. Who has stopped him? Aren't these the biggest games of the year to date? Who has stopped him? I want you to look at his numbers during the regular season. Right? Just like you understand that Lillard is the man in Portland. That Joker is the man in Denver. Donovan Mitchell offensively is the man in Utah. Right? Understand, too, the reigning defensive player of the year is Rudy Gobert. He's also in Utah. Is it possible that we have this team undervalued? So given the magnitude of Kawhi's injury, right, he's the top player. There's nobody else close. He's the top player on the Clippers, right? The team takes after him. Silent assassin. We don't have to talk about it. Let's just go about it. Let's just get it done. That's the team personality. You really think that emotional nucleus is going to survive him missing game five? You really think him on the sideline waving a towel is going to be enough to lift the Clippers in game five on the road in Utah where the Utah Jazz have one of the best home records in the entire league and are the one seed? That Clipper series is over in my opinion, folks. Unless... Mitchell gets injured like Kawhi is right now, or Rudy Gobert gets injured like Kawhi is right now. If everyone stays healthy, the Utah Jazz should make it out of that series. So, of course, lightning has struck twice for the Jazz. Now we're hearing that Chris Paul is in COVID protocol. Folks, basketball is about more than showing up on game day, as we saw yesterday. In the Brooklyn Net game, looking at James Harden in that first half, right? It looked like Harden hadn't even been practicing with the team. He looked terrible in that first half. Started to become James Harden in the second half of that game. Well, understand, here are the Phoenix Suns in the conference final for the first time in several years. And their top guy, their MVP candidate, Chris Paul, is in COVID protocol. Now you understand whether they face Utah or they face the Clippers, the Suns are going to have to be ready. Being ready means more than showing up on game day. It means practicing before game day. You're telling me that Chris Paul is not going to be able to practice with the team while he's in COVID protocol and you're telling me that they're likely not going to have home court in the next round because they're likely to be facing the one seed, the Utah Jazz. Folks, stick a pin in the bubble. Phoenix is not beating Utah. Right? You lose a Chris Paul right now to COVID protocol, folks. Just like with the Clippers, you're losing your emotional leader. I know Phoenix has talent. I'm a big Cory Booker fan. I think he's ridiculously talented. I remember when he scored over 70 in a game. Right? Aiton, top seed in the draft one year. 
I'm a Pac-12 guy. I saw the guy in college. The guy's a monster. I know Phoenix has talent. We're talking about something different here. We're talking about emotional leadership. We're talking about the guy the team looks at when the bullets start coming back. And you say, oh my God, we've got to get things right here. This battle is getting rough and tumble. Who do they look at? They look at the point guard. They look at the future Hall of Famer, Chris Paul. I don't care how many teams he's played for. Just like Kawhi is alpha on the Clippers, Chris Paul is alpha on the Phoenix Suns. Now you're telling me that he's not going to be able to practice with the team? Worse yet. And this information's just trickling down. If he's in a certain protocol, he won't even be eligible for game one of that series. You're telling me this guy is going to join the flight after the plane has taken off and is in mid-flight? Folks, I don't like it. I think Utah has just gotten incredibly lucky. I think the Utah Jazz are coming out of the Western Conference. What that means is that the plus 350 on the Jazz to win outright, and I prefer win outright bets to just win the conference because then you're getting the great odds multiplied by more than two. Right? Understand the Jazz to win the West are a plus 175. That's tasty as it is. But I like the plus 350, especially given what's happened in the East. Right, Kyrie, ankle problem. Who knows how long he's going to be out? James Harden, hamstring problem. That next step might be his last step for these playoffs. Right, Joel Embiid looked terrible his last game. They're telling you, oh, it's not a big deal. He just has a torn meniscus. You're like, torn meniscus? Right? The guy, the guy doesn't look that dominant, folks. Highly skilled. He's blowing layups. Then we get the explanation. He said, normally I would dunk that. But I just didn't have the lift here, right? Didn't have the lift. Let's just say, I think the East has tremendous teams. I think the Nets are one of the most talented teams I've ever seen. I just don't think the East has the health right now. Right? So, I like Utah, plus 350 to win it all. If they get to the finals, okay, great. I can hedge the place somewhat. But by the time Utah gets to the finals, and this bet's premised on the idea that Utah is healthy, right? If I see Rudy Gobert clutching his hamstring and I hear he's missing games, hey, the logic here goes out the window. Right, but with a plus 350, I believe they show up to the finals. Then we'll find out what team they're playing against. Right, I personally believe the winner of the Bucks Nets series is going to come out of the East, in part because I have a problem with Ben Simmons. Right? You've been a highly touted player for years, but yet can't develop a jump shot, yet are unreliable from the free throw line? Come on. Come on. Also, the Joel Embiid situation, Embiid looks in pain to me. I think he's one of the most talented big men I have ever seen. He doesn't look healthy to me. Right? Philly would have the horses if they were completely healthy. Danny Green's hurt too. No one's talking about him. I feel more comfortable with Danny Green taking big shots than I do Tobias Harris. So I believe the war in the West is done. I like Utah. Plus 350 to win outright sounds good to me. I like that play. Right? In the East, 
let's just say, as talented as the teams are, Brooklyn's banged up bad, right? Kyrie didn't play. Uh, the ghost of James Harden played yesterday. It really took a historical game by KD to pull that off, right? Let's face it, Philly's banged up. And let's face it, I don't know what the deal is with the Bucks, but the Bucks have a hard time handling success, don't they? I was looking at that Bucks game yesterday and I thought, oh, the Bucks got this. This series is over. Of course, I was thinking that in the third quarter when the Bucks had a big lead. When they look spectacular. Then, of course, it's Milwaukee Bucks basketball. It's the Giannis era. We get to the fourth quarter, the Bucks decide, hey, let's make this complicated. Let's give away this game. We don't want too much success. We don't want to beat Brooklyn in game five. Be up 3-2, then have our fans show up for game six for what should be a coronation. No, let's do this the hard way. Let's squander this lead. <laughs> let's just squander this lead. Let's allow the Nets to win game five. That's what it felt like. Let's put ourselves in a hole again. Right? To me, the Bucks are still alive. I believe the Bucks win game six. Right? But let's just say they've again put themselves in a hole. So as talented as the East is, right? Embiid, KD, Giannis, right? Let's face it. If Utah shows up healthy in the finals, folks, they'll have a real shot. They'll have a real shot. I like Utah plus 350 to win it all right here for strategic reasons. I do believe the Utah Jazz. Yes, the Utah Jazz. Make it out of the Western Conference. And finally, can we stop dissing guys simply because they play for Utah? The guy's name is Donovan Mitchell. He is one of the best players in the National Basketball Association. He's the engine that keeps Utah's offense going. Let's stop sleeping on this guy. He's been absolutely dominant. Look at the numbers in the playoffs. Dominant. No one has been able to stop him. Understand, Utah has weapons. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you, folks. No Kyrie. Excuse me. No Kawhi for Game 5. No Chris Paul for practice. To me, means that the Utah Jazz, if they stay healthy come out of the West. That's how I see it. It's Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.